Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be going way back in time, trying to advance our civilization and come out ahead with the most victory points, of course, in Tribe's Dawn of Humanity. In this game, the players are going to be using their own tribes and their own lands, the lands they have access to, in order to, using those things in combination, advance through history and discover new ideas and concepts and equipment. Uh, the game is going to be a family style game and uh, you are going to be trying to get the most victory points, managing a couple of different things. There's some action selection in this and uh, at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the whole thing. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how this works. I'll give you an overview. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. Here we're taking a look at a game for three players and this is what it might look like set up. A few of these things will be different depending on the randomness of setup. So the players in the game are trying to get the highest score possible and they are going to get victory points mainly from these developments and they're going to get the number of victory points of the, of the spaces they occupy, and they might get victory points from advancements on these tracks here. So, we have our star player over here, and uh, they are going to take the first turn. On your turn, you are going to pick one of these tiles down here, and you are going to activate an action on that tile. You always start from this end here and work your way that way. So, for example, for our start player here, they could take this tile and take one of the two actions printed on it for free. But let's say they don't want to take those actions, instead they like this one. Well, you can take one of your shells, place it on the one you're skipping, and then take this action. Or let's say they want this action way over here. Well, they can take a, a few more shells and place one on each tile they're skipping and then take that action. No matter which one you do, once you are done taking that action, you are going to take it and move it to the back of the line like so, and then it'll be the next player's turn, all right? So let's reset that and give this player a proper first turn, and that way I can explain what these different things do. So this player is indeed going to pick the first tile, and they're going to pick the hand power, which shows up on three of these tiles out there. That's the one that lets you invent something, or develop, or study something. And so they are going to, in order to do that, they are going to take a look at the locations that they control with their tribes, uh, meeples over here. So at the beginning of the game you get three tiles, you're going to pick uh, one of them on which you put a, a little tribe token, and they are now invested and have the ability to develop the associated tiles out here. So they pick that, they have one here with the horse symbol, and that tile there, the requirement is one horse symbol. So they can develop this. They are going to do so, they are going to put one of their wooden tokens on the first available empty space, and it says they get two victory points. The teeth over here are victory points, so they take one that shows two, add that to their uh, supply, and then they take this tile move it to the back of the line like so. As soon as anyone has gone to one of these tiles, the one directly above it is revealed, and they are going to get not just those two victory points, but an advancement on one of their tracks. In this case, this one here, which is strength. And then it'll be the next player's turn. And that player is going to do one of those actions, same exact way. As you can see, the level two tiles up here require that you be in two locations that show that symbol, and the ones at the top will require three of something. They always match each other, so it'll be three of the same thing. Our second player here is going to take a turn, and they are going to, uh, they want to do this power here. So they are going to place one shell there, one shell there, and they will take the eye icon and do that power. That one allows players to find more land. They are going to explore their lands. Now every time you do one of these in a green hexagon, you are going to check the corresponding location out here, and you are going to be able to do that at the strength at, uh, to which you have climbed. In this case, all the players are at level one. So this player only gets one tile. They reach in the bag, 
they grab one tile and they are going to add that to their display out here growing their land and then they take that token they take put it at the back and it'll be the next player's turn this player wants to take this power with the uh, little baby icon so they'll pick that first tile first of all they're going to get that shell and they will move this to the back of the line and the baby icon well allows you to reproduce so they are going to again check the track they're still at level one so they can only make one new tribe token. It has to go somewhere where there is a tribe token already. So they will do that. And we loop back around to our first player who is going to take a turn. They are going to, might as well explain the uh, final symbol, which is this one with the feet. So they are going to take that shell, add it to their supply. They'll move that token all the way to the back. And the feet token allows you to move your tribes around the board in order to occupy the symbols that you would like. So they can move one step, they are going to take this character, move it one step to there. You can split up these steps however you want to once you have more of them. So you can give several steps to a single tribe or you can split those steps up among multiple characters. And uh, then it'll be the next player's turn. So this player is going to now Go ahead and do the hand action on there. They are occupying that rocky location, which is this one. So they can add a cube to the first spot there. Let's go ahead and move that. And we are going to give them two victory points for their efforts. But that location also has a little symbol right above that too. It's a little lightning bolt. What that means is we are going to grab one of these tokens here and we are going to add it to the back of the line. And it's a new power, a new location that can be triggered. And once it is, it'll be removed from that activation line. In this case, this one says, Constellations, all tribes explore according to their strength value. First of all, explore is this power here, drawing more land. And according to their strength value, references this track right here. So the strength value is going to be utilized by lots of these different tokens. By the way, that player also now gets to move one st step up on that track. So we find that track and we move them up. That means from now on, every time they choose to move tribes, they'll be able to move two steps, split up however they want to. This player must also now reveal this tile and make it available to everyone uh, so that they can see what's coming up. One thing I want to mention is the only players who can go to these tiles are those that have invested in the tiles right below them. And so I cannot directly jump onto this one unless I am in this one as well. However, there is one time in the game that you can break following these arrows here. And that is using your own arrow. Each player is given one of these arrows at the beginning of the game and during the game, let's say uh, these have all been revealed because the players have placed these cubes along the way. So this player is there and there. Once they placed here, they revealed that one. And the brown player has developed this one as well and revealed that one. So let's say they'd like this tile, but they're not invested in that track at all. One time you can use your arrow and deviate from this path to another one and go in that location. That gets them six victory points and one of these tiles added to the lineup. So again, you can do that one time in the game. There's one more thing I want to mention and that is the ability to scorch your lands in order to have the icons that you do not currently possess. So for example, let's say this player, I'm going to just break this up a little bit. This player has these lands controlled and they would like to go on this tile. We'll assume of course that they can do so. They'd like to go on this one but this requires three of the horse symbol and they currently have two. They have this one and they have that one. They cannot do it. However, you can uh, flip over one of the tiles on which you have at least one tribe and it will be a virtual version of that symbol and now having taken the appropriate hand action, they could do it. 
However, that land is scorched, it is now blank, it will not work for anything else, and it might hurt one of their bonuses at the end of the game. So you have to decide when you are going to do so. And when you do it, you have to have at least one natural symbol, so you cannot just flip over three of anything and take these three spots. At least one of them must be the real thing. The players are going to continue taking turns, advancing themselves on these tracks, gaining the ability to move more, to reproduce more, to grab more land tiles. They are going to be expanding their domains. They are going to be gaining victory points from these, and they'll be adding these tokens to the line. And again, once they are picked, the power will go off and they'll be removed from the line. So it will wax and wane a little bit, and the game will be over once a number of these have been added to the line and cycled out. And that is from the final step, step three, up here. Once the game is over, the players are going to figure out their victory points. You are going to get a couple of bonus points for having the most tribes. You are going to get a couple of victory points from having the most lands. The scorched ones don't count for that. And then to that, you will add the teeth victory points that you have gathered throughout the game, as well as any of these bonuses you have reached. Say this player made it all the way up here, that's another six victory points. At that point, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the game. So let me show you a couple of these powers while I have them here. So for example, this one says, uh, uh, let's see, let's find one that is uh, different. Like this one, Sabertooth Tiger. Your tribe loses one victory point if your tribe is the weakest. Again, that accounts for that. And there are some that say your tribe uh, procreates according to its strength value. So if you pick that and you are, let's say, the uh, player who is playing the brown pieces, that's three. You get to add three of your tribes to your display. Some of the ones up here are rather brutal, all the way at the top. Earthquake. Your tribe exhausts three of its land tiles. If you're the one that has to pick this. Normally when you get to a tile like this, and that's in the lineup, the players will skip it a few times. So And so these will start building up on it until eventually someone is forced to or, ha or, or chooses to take it. They'll have to deal with the negative effect, but they do get the shells, which allows them more mobility down here. And so you've got that, you've got this one, your tribe gains four victory points. If your tribe is the strongest, that's invasion. Things of that nature is what you will find in these action tiles over here. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so that is Tribes Dawn of Humanity. I have to say overall, this is a very pleasant game. I really enjoyed it. It's a fun game. It is not revolutionary. It is a game that uh, at the end of the day, my main uh, complaint about it is that it desperately needs more content. But, because of the replayability, I think won't be there. But overall, uh, like I said, I had a lot of fun with it. And it's a breezy game. It plays quickly. I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down a little bit. My main issues with it are, as I said, replayability. I think there's not a lot of variability between plays. But, on the flip side of that, it does scale well. It plays as well with two as it does with four. So I like that, and I think, again, it's a good family game for that reason. You can play with, you know, just about everybody, and it's not a difficult game to play. But yes, you'll see the same things from play to play, and that could get tiresome a little quicker than I would like, perhaps. And then the other thing is theme. Theme and setting. You know, the theme of expansion and growth of knowledge, that sort of theme is engaging, and the sense of progression in the game, though it is very abstracted, I think it's done well, but it is quite abstracted, and uh, everything does feel uh, like it could have been perhaps anything. No one part of it stood out to me as being particularly engrossing in putting me in that world. Though being in that world, and once that veneer fades a little bit, then I did enjoy the things I was doing in it. Again, not a negative, just slightly weak for me. Everything else I did enjoy, the aesthetics, everything looks really uh, good, it's a well-made product. I like the uh, graphic design in it, I like the uh, quality of everything you are playing with. It's a good looking game, very simple to get into and play. Uh, the uh, game length, 
the progression in the game feels speedy. I like that. I like that the very first turn out of the gate, you can discover something. One of the low ones, of course, but right away you could do that because you begin with something already. And I think that was very smart. I like that you don't begin with, uh, you know, nothing in front of you. You can very quickly start making moves that feel significant, you know, and, and give you goals to work towards. I like that a lot. And um, ease of play also couples with that because it's a very clean design and your turns will be quick. And I like that action selection track, I think is a, a, a really, it's a, it's a thing we've seen before, but it's implemented into this game particularly well. I like the idea of adding tiles to it from those tracks and having new actions come up sometimes good sometimes you want them sometimes not so much and so they'll get skipped over you know the uh, currency of those shells and, and having the ability to skip over tiles is again something we've seen plenty but it's well used in this game this this game does not you know make its presence known because of its originality what it does do it does well and I like that. I respect the game for that. Lastly, tactics and strategy. There are enough pressure points here to make the play engaging and interesting. As I said, the shells and bidding for that. Uh, when you advance, when you choose to, you know, uh, burn your lands, if you would, for that final push at the expense of possibly losing a couple of points later on. Uh, it all is enough to keep you engaged, but not so much that the repeat plays are particularly exciting, if that makes sense. You know, first play of this, excellent. Second play, I had a lot of fun. And right, and you can start to see this is going to play out in about the same way. Now, you don't see every single tile from each of those lines. One is removed. But that's not a ton of variability. And I would love to have seen or see in the future maybe a, cop a couple of little modules that would change this aspect or change that aspect and I think that's going to add to the replayability in a, in a great way and it needs it. So overall, as I said, I do like the game. It's uh it's attractive. It's a good family game. I certainly would recommend it if you're looking for something to play with the whole family up you know up to four players and uh you want to make sure it's something that everybody can understand and get into. This one will do that job. I really do think so and I enjoy it. So my bottom line is as follows. A fun and approachable family game that begs for expansions but should provide solid enjoyment. This is going to get a 7 out of 10 from me which means it gets a seal of approval and uh, as I said I recommend it for that kind of player and or group that wants to play something that's mechanically solid but streamlined uh, uh, very much so you know um, and it's going to allow everyone to grasp what's happening right away and start making progress so there you go tribes dawn of humanity again seal of approval from me i'm z garcia thanks for watching everybody i'll see you on the next one thanks so much for watching another dice tower video if you enjoy our videos subscribe to the channel for more fun comprehensive board game coverage also consider joining us at one of our events come to dice tower retreat a small intimate gathering where gaming is king Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.